weeks now, and I've equipped you with a wide range of tools, both in reading the text as well as in approaching the questions. Am I right, everybody? You all know that the six signposts have to do with how to read and annotate the text. And you all know that the four question types, right, your reading with meaning have to do with how to approach the different types of questions that you'll be asked in your comprehension tests and passages, right? Okay, so uh, very quickly, just as a, as a way to warm up and to recall what we've covered, right? I'm going to ask some of you to give me what you remember of, let's start with what we learned most recently of the six signposts. Can anybody just very quickly raise your hands and shout out a few of these signposts? Okay, Brian first, uh, Dia second, um, Claire third, um, uh, Ariel fourth, right? Okay, uh, then we'll see. Come first, Brian. Aha moment. Okay, an aha moment is a signpost. Very good. Uh, Dia? Contrast and contradictions. Contrasts and contradictions. Very good. Showing you the out of expectation events. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Ariel, next. Unmute yourself, Ariel. So we words can hear. from the wiser. Word from the wiser. Very good. Word or words from the wiser. Excellent. Claire? Memory moment. Memory moment, right? It's like a it's like a recall, it's like a flashback kind of a moment. Excellent. Um, yes, Dia, go. Tough questions. Tough questions, excellent. And can someone name me the last one? What was not said out of the six? Right, we've had five. Amelia? Words of the wiser. Oh no, words of the wiser was already mentioned earlier on. Okay, can anybody remember what are the six signposts that uh, have not yet been mentioned? Anyone? Oh, yes, Skylar, go. Sorry? Speak louder, you got it? I can't hear you, Skylar, I'm sorry. Is your microphone faulty? One more time, Skylar, try again. Again and again. Again and again, thank you, very good, well done. Okay, that's all six signposts, excellent. So six signposts and four question types, right, I mentioned. So let's, let's go into the question type, shall we? So what were the four question types that I taught y'all to look out for whenever you tackle questions in any comprehension, in fact, any comprehension, right? Uh, Hao Tian, would you like to name one since you raised your hand just now, Hao Tian? You can't remember the question types? Oh dear, okay. Um, Dia, go, let's start off with you. Right there. Right there question, which is one of the most basic. Very good, Shen Yi, go. Think and search. Think and search, which is one of the most common, right? The most basic and the most common, right? Right there, think and search. Um, Brian. Author and me. Author and me, which is rarer, but right, uh, one of the more difficult types of questions. Excellent. And finally, the rarest one of them all almost never occurs is Claire. On my own. On my own, right? Yeah, we almost never see on my own questions in comprehensions that are set at primary level. Once you go to secondary school next time, when you go into like doing like very long and complex passages, huh? um, like for example, today, the passage you did on Gen Z, right? You did the passage on Gen Z. Did you notice that there were a lot of on my own questions? There were a lot of questions that asked you about what you thought, right? What did you think? Do you think that you are a Gen Z? -er? Do you think that Gen Zs have it easy? Right, there's a lot of questions in today's passage because that passage, to be very frank with all of you, was extracted from a secondary two passage. Okay, so if you found it difficult, well, you know why now, right? It was a secondary two passage that I extracted those questions from. So don't be disheartened if you weren't able to answer all the questions. It was a much tougher exercise than what you're normally used to, okay? So today, what we're going to do is going to be easier, I promise you, okay? Don't worry. It'll be much easier for today's practice. Okay, so well done. You have remembered the six signposts, right, to look out for when you're reading the passage. The four question types, right, to categorize your questions into so that you know how to answer them adequately. And always remember to look for the marks allocation. Think and search questions are usually multiple marks, right? Write that questions are usually one mark, right? And of course, author and me and your um, uh, on my own questions are often multiple marks, can be even three or four marks sometimes, okay? So look out for these questions. The harder they are, the more marks will usually be allocated to them. So pay attention once the marks go beyond one. 
pay closer attention. So good, right? Today, I'm going to add to your arsenal of comprehension tools by introducing you to a few other uh, lesser known strategies, okay? That might still be helpful, all right? And then we are going to practice a little bit at the end of today, okay? Like I said, maybe about 10 minutes, we'll do a blue cut just to end off today's session, right? To give you a little bit of uh, relaxation at the end. Okay, but for now, I'm going to go into uh, some content. So please sit back, right? I want your undivided attention for the next 15 minutes. That's all I'm going to take, right? I'm just going to cover 15 minutes of content. Then we'll have a little bit of a discussion, okay? Where y'all can be a bit more participative. So please don't look at any other things. Please make sure your screen is turned on and please make sure you give me your undivided attention for the next 15 minutes, all right? And along the way, if you have any questions, like, you know, your emoticon, or just raise your hands and uh, I will stop and I will try to answer your questions, all right? This session is being recorded. So even though I'm going very quickly, right? My pace is very fast. You can always review the recording and slow me down if you wish to, all right? So let's go today. Okay. Now, um, a couple of uh, strategies that uh, you already may have learned, right? I just want to, wanted to put it all together and summarize it, okay? Uh, and uh, what you can do uh, in the event that you encounter some questions, okay? So just take a look at this table, right? Active listening, clarifying, monitoring your own understanding, and sharing and interacting, right? These are some strategies that we already do in Reading with Meaning, right? But I thought I'd put them all together, okay? Now, of course, there are certain things like clarifying using questions uh, that you can't do during an examination, okay? But what you can try to do is ask yourself questions, right? So that you are questioning yourself as you read the text, you become a little bit more alert when you are actually reading it, okay? Now, what do I mean by listen actively? Uh, and why is it keep your eyes on the speaker? This is more during a presentation, right? Like what I'm doing right now. But in an actual reading passage, this translates to you reading the passage out loud to yourself and listening to yourself. So who is the speaker? You are the speaker. Why do I say this? And I say this to all my students, because when we read with our eyes, we activate one small portion of our brain here called the hippocampus, right? But when we read with our mouths, we are activating two simultaneous areas in our brains because we are reading with our eyes when we read with our mouth, but we are also reading with our ears when we read with our mouth. So you activate twice as much brain matter to understand the same amount of text. So why do I ask my students to always read out loud to themselves? Because you activate twice as much of your brain when you read something out loud than you do reading silently just with your eyes. If you understand what I'm saying, give me a thumbs up. Right? I'm sure you all, all know, right, in math, right, two is better than one, correct? Two is a larger number than one. So using one part of your brain to read is always going to be less effective than using two parts of your brain to read. And by reading something out loud with your mouth, you're activating both your eyes and your ears at the same time. And that uses twice as much brain power and gives you twice as many results. So please, when you read, don't just limit yourself to your eyes, use your mouth to read. And at the same time, you're also practicing reading aloud, which is an oracy skill, right? So why not? Many, many birds being killed with one stone. So I always tell my students, when you read a comprehension passage, always listen actively. And to do that, you need to speak the passage out. Of course, in the exam, please don't read out loud, really loudly. Read under your breath, like quietly whisper to yourself so you can hear. And then as you hear it, use different parts of your brain to process what you're hearing and what you're seeing. You will be twice as alert and twice as attentive to the details, okay? So I've covered listen actively. I've covered clarifying with questions, monitoring your understanding. So this one is about activating your prior knowledge, right? We've learned this as well in Reading with Meaning, right? We think about what we already know. Author and me, right, has to do with activating what you already know and connecting it to what the author is teaching you in the passage. Author and me questions demand that skill. So you need to be aware of what you already know and bring your information and your understanding to the text. We'll practice that later in one of the passages I prepared for you today, okay? So monitoring your understanding, bringing your prior knowledge into the passage is super important to be a good reader and a good performer in comprehension questions and texts, okay? And finally, sharing your ideas is what we are doing today, right? The reason why many of you prefer a Zoom session rather than having a video of Mr. Pang teaching you is because you like to interact, am I right? You like to see your friends' interactions. You like to see them raise their hands. You like to hear their answers. You like to compare it with your own to see whether you have a different answer, right? And this kind of interaction is a very good 
It's a very, very good trait to have as a learner, right? Many of Mr. Pang's previous uh, students, they only preferred to watch the video because they didn't like to interact in a class. And I think one of the strengths of your class is that you all really love interacting. And when you interact, you are actually saying that many minds is better than one mind. And again, mathematically, that is so, right? 40 students is always better than one, right? No matter how blur or distracted the 40 students may be, 40 students are still going to be better than one student thinking by himself or herself. So there is strength in interaction and therefore we need to use this strategy when we read text together. And that's why we have class discussions. That's why Mr. Pang allows you all to come up with your different answers. And then I try to take pains to explain to you why or why not I accept your answers. I don't just say yes, no, right, wrong. I don't do that, right? I always give your reasons and I explain to you and I listen to your reasons as well. Because it's important to think aloud and it's important to think as a class. Because that way, we can build much better answers than if we came up with them by ourselves. So I repeat, huh? we need to listen actively by reading the passage out loud. We need to clarify the passage by asking questions of ourselves and others. We need to monitor our understanding by bringing what we already know into this passage so that we can connect it to what we are learning. And we need to interact with our friends and with the class in order to construct together a better answer than we could ever have come up with by ourselves. Okay? All good, everybody? So far, all of this is just connecting the dots, huh? all the things we've already learned up to now and all the things that Mr. Pang has been teaching you quite diligently and industriously. If any of this sounds new or unfamiliar to you, always refer back to my previous videos, okay? Which I have linked in all the previous posts above. You just go and look at all of them and review them. If you can't access them, let me know. I will send the videos to you personally so you can view them again, okay? But I think generally speaking, you're all strong, you're all good and you're all able and ready to sit for this next test that's coming up for comprehension, okay? If you remember, listening, clarifying, understanding, and interacting. These are the main skills, okay? But part under this <coughs> um, are these other like sub-skills, right? So when I ask you to, to listen actively, I'm asking you to notice, right? Right? So it's linked, huh? When I ask you to clarify, I'm asking you to ask questions, I'm asking you to mark out the text, to annotate, all right? And in a moment, I will give you a little bit more about how to annotate, right? And then when I'm asking you to monitor your own understanding, I'm asking you to connect what you already know with what's already in the text, okay? And finally, when I'm asking you, I'm sorry, when I'm asking you to interact and share your ideas, right? I'm asking you to respond, right? I'm asking you to share. Share what's in your head. Say out loud to your friends around you and then be able to check your understanding because what you're saying is actually a summary of what you understand from the text, okay? When you say something, you're actually summarizing something, okay? For example, if I ask you to read a text and I ask you, what do you think about this text? You have to summarize. You will summarize by telling me what you think about it. And that thought, that opinion that you have is your summary. And remember, we did debate, right? Debate is essentially a summary, right? What is debate a summary of? Debate is a summary of everything you learned on the internet, isn't it? You read all these things on the internet, you found all these articles, you looked at all these different information sources, and then you had to push them all together into a three or two minute script that you had to deliver right in front of everybody else without any reference to all the units and all the readings and all the internet websites that you had visited before, right? You had to summarize it, okay? So nothing different, everything in English, boils down to these same skills. It doesn't matter whether you're reading, writing, speaking, or viewing. All the skills are the same, right? If you know the skills in one, you can apply them to the other, right? That's the beauty of learning English. And next time, if you all learn a foreign language like Japanese or Spanish, right? Or even an exotic language like Vanuatian, whatever, right? You will apply the same skills. It's the same skills, whatever language you learn. Mother tongue as well, right? Okay, so let's go. This is my attempt to squeeze everything into one slide for you so that you can refer to this when you annotate your text. Because a lot of times, the main complaint Mr. Pang always hears from my students, especially from my students who are weaker in English is, I don't know what to annotate. Mr. Pang, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to, to underline. I don't know what to highlight. I don't know what to make connections with. I don't know what to ask questions about. Okay, so here, right, is my very... Uh, Desperate attempt to squeeze everything together using a not very memorable acronym, CROP QB. Okay? I, I know it's not very memorable, but this is the best I could come up with. Okay? Uh, I can't fit everything together in an elegant, nice-sounding 
uh, acronym that makes sense. So I just, you know, put it all together like this. Okay, so take a look at this. I'm not going to bore you by going through every single item. Just look at it. I will make a screenshot of this and I will send it to all of you as a reference, okay? But anytime you are wondering, right, how do I annotate the text? How do I break down the text? Huh? Like, what do I write on it? Huh? What do I underline? Huh? Refer to this, okay? So connections, reactions, opinions, predictions, questions, visualizations, and summaries, okay? Right? Uh, and what is the most obvious summary? Right? I'll start at the end. Huh? What's the most obvious summary? How do I know what? a book is about, for example, what do I look at in the quickest and easiest way to tell me what a book is about? What is the summary that I look at immediately? Dia? You raise the your wall, hand. The wall Sorry. statement. The, huh? What? The wall, like the main aim of the book. No, la, the book has no wall statement. One. You oh. go to the bookshop, you look at the book, right? Where got any book got wall statement? Don't have, no wall statement, right? No book has a wall statement. What do all books have though? That I always look at first in order to find out what that book is about. Eh? What do I look at first? Solomon? The last page of the book. Uh, like you're looking you're talking about the blurb, right? The blurb at the end, right? Uh, yeah. No, that's not the first thing I look at. Uh, I don't start by looking at the blurb. Though a blurb is important and informational. Yes, Ariel? The title. Yeah, correct, right. The title of a book is its most basic summary. Don't you agree? Right? The title will definitely be related in some way to what the book is about. There's no such thing as a book about, let's say my title is Mermaids, right? But then my book is about making sandwiches, right? If I had a title on the bookshelf said Mermaid, right? Then I open the book, then I read, eh, how to make a tuna sandwich, right? I will be really angry, right? I'll be like going back to the bookshop and saying, give me back my money, right? I wanted to learn about mermaids as mythical creatures. Why are you giving me a recipe for tuna sandwich? Unless you're saying I chopped up the mermaid and made tuna sandwich, right? Unlikely for that to happen, right? It doesn't work that way. Because a title is supposed to summarize the main idea of any story that I read, right? It must at least be about the main character, right? There must be something related between the title and the story. So a title is the most basic form of summary for any text that you will read. And that's why in order for you to fully understand a story, it's very often important for you to know its title. Okay, and later we will explore this as well, okay? Because titles are very important in setting the context for the story. By the way, can you all still remember what context means? Because context runs through a lot of these points. Huh? Anybody can remember what is Mr. Pang's definition of context? I always say context is king, right? Meaning context is the most important thing, right? To anything. Anybody knows and remembers what I define context was very early on in February. Anyone? Anybody? I know you're frantically looking to Google the word context, huh? right? But it's not going to avail you. The Google definition of context is not the definition that I taught you, right? So I will know when you try to Google it. Anyone? Anybody wants to try? No wrong answer. It's okay if you can't remember it. Okay, if you can't remember it, just shake your hand vigorously so that I can just get down to it. Yeah, yeah, all vigorous handshakers, huh? Okay, right. So context is the information that's behind, behind the text, context. So the information that is behind the text, in order for you to understand the text, you need the information that is behind it. What kind of information might be behind the text? What, kind, what do I mean by the information behind a text? Can you give me some examples of what is context or the information behind the text? Who is behind the text? What is behind the text? Anyone? Who or what is behind the text? Anyone? Quick. Solomon, go. A blurb. Uh, no. <laughs> no. A blurb is not behind the text. No, you're too literal. Okay. Nicholas, you raise your hand. No, nobody. What is important to know before you read any book? Besides the title, lah, obviously, right? Besides the title. Lah. What's important for you to know before you read a book? It's important for you to know this, you know, before you read the book, right? Angel? Is it the author? Yes, very good. The author. Who is writing this book? That's important information, right? Right? If the writer of the book is your mother or your father, Right? Does that matter? 
Is it important to know? Yeah, right. It's very important, right? It's very important, right? Or if the writer is Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. Yes, right. Very important, right? But if the writer is some random person walking on the street, would you read the book? No, right? No. But if your writer is J.K. Rowling, huh? or Artemis Fowl, right? Or someone famous, yeah, you would probably think about reading that book. But if you never heard a person before, you don't know who he is or who she is, you probably wouldn't read the book, right? So important information like author, like language, right? If the book is written in Japanese, would you be able to read it? I don't think many of you would, right? You'd probably not even look at the book if it was written in a different language. So contextual information gives us important information about the text that allows us to understand the text better and approach it more appropriately, right? For example, like I told you, if I had said before you did today's Gen Z exercise that it was from a secondary two text, would you have approached it differently? Would you? Probably, right? You probably would have, uh-oh, it's going to be tough, or uh-oh, it's going to be really... But if, since I didn't tell you that, you probably thought that it was just a normal comprehension exercise, right? Just a bit tougher, right? Right? Yeah, so what you know about the text shapes your approach to it as well as your perspective of it, okay? If I told you that something was written by a very evil person, a very bad person, a person who is now in jail for life, would you read it differently than if I didn't tell you that? Yeah, very, very differently, right? Because you will be very careful when you read his, when you read his story, you'll be reading, oh, this person is a criminal. No, I better be careful. I don't get influenced by it, right? So again, contextual information is key to understanding the text, right? So all of this is my attempt to summarize. I just spoke about summary. I just talked about context. That's it. I'm not going to talk about anything else because I don't want to take up too much time, okay? So any questions here? Is what I'm saying sensible to all of you? Do you all understand? Okay, so in addition to the six signposts to help you understand the dramatic and important moments in the story, the four question types, which enables you to classify the questions and answer them appropriately, I'm teaching you another strategy called Crop QV to give you ways to approach the text to annotate it meaningfully so that it will give more secrets to you and you can identify more important things. So the six signposts together with Crop QV, if you add them together, right, will give you a very rich way to break down the text and understand it better. And this skill will follow you all the way to university. This is not a primary school skill. This is not even a secondary school skill. This is a life skill. I say again, huh, this is not a primary school skill that I'm teaching you right now. Huh? This is not some basic fun foundational level skill. Huh? This is a life skill. You will be using this all the way up to when you work, right? If you use it carefully and if you learn it carefully, this skill will save your life. You will spot errors and mistakes that other people will miss. You will see things that other people will not see. And it will put you in a place where you can make better decisions. Do you all understand? Close reading, first reading, crop QV, six signposts. These are life skills. Okay, so please attend to them carefully. Right, now. Oh, wait. Did I just jump the gun? Wait a minute. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, read this. I'm not going to give you any context, but I'm going to ask you some questions about context shortly. Just read it, okay? Just read it. I'm not asking you to answer any questions. Just read it. Huh? Read it as quickly as you can. First pass. This is your first reading. Huh? Just read one time through. Once only. Huh? Don't keep reading. Huh? Just one time. Huh? When you are done reading, please give me a thumbs up so I can go to the next page. There's two pages of this. I want to see how fast you can read. See what you notice from it. And see if you have any questions about it. Okay. So imagine if you're annotating, what questions would you write down? What connections would you make? What no what things would you notice about this text? Since you know nothing about the author and about the background, right? Mm. Oh good. Okay. I see some of you with thumbs up already. Awesome. Right? I'm assuming that's a thumbs up, right, Jeanette? Yep. Not you trying to dig your nose with your thumb, right? Okay, good. Awesome. Okay, Adrian, I see yours as well. Good, Dia. Very good. 
Thank you, Javen. I see your thumbs up virtually. Claire, I can hardly see you. Can you adjust your camera accordingly? Thank you, Hao Tian. Okay, thank you, Claire. Right, yep, I see you, Claris. I see you, Amelia, right? Good job, thank you. Yes, Nicholas. Yes, Skylar, I see you as well. Solomon, are you done? Not yet, okay. Angel, good. Roshan, are you done? Roshan, I can see your forehead. That's about all I can see. Please let Mr. Pang see more than your forehead. Thank you. Even though it's a nice forehead, please adjust your camera so that I can see more of your face. Thank you. Awesome. I think most of you are done. Okay, Roshan, are you done? Can Roshan hear me? Uh? Roshan, wave if you can hear me. Roshan. Can you hear me, Roshan? Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's go on to the next one. So this is page two, please read. By the way, uh, anybody has read this story before? No, right? Awesome. Okay, very good. I have extracted this from a storybook. It's not a passage, it's a book, right? This is just two pages of the book. <clears throat> okay, how huh? finishing? Okay, awesome, right. I think most of you are finished. Um, I would love to use this text uh, for the six signposts because it's quite rich for six signposts, but I don't want to do six signposts because that's not the objective of today's lesson. I want to do crop QV, okay? I just want to do crop QV. Uh. I want you all to, to notice a few things from what we are reading, uh, okay? Um, I will ask you to summarize it, right, by giving me a title, if you can, right? When you think about what title you will give, uh, for this extract, if you were forced to give a title to this passage, what title will you give to it? I want you to think about that. Okay, so that's in summarizing. I want you to think about what are the contextual informations? What are the connections you have made between what you know and what's in the passage? And what are the details you have observed by reading this that gives you some clues about you know, what this is about? The big story, not just this part of the extract. Okay, and then lastly, yeah, I want you to predict when you make a prediction, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, at the end of the story, at the end of this passage, uh, something dramatic happens, right? So what do you think happens at the end? Because it's not said, it's not spoken, right? You have to infer. Inference is another skill, right? You have to infer what happened. And then what do you think is going to happen next? Okay, so I want you to think of these few things. Give me a title, right? Think about it. What title you will give? Uh? Think about what are the, you know, details that you've noticed in this story that gives you a clue about what this story is about. So title, details that give you clues about what the story is about. What do you think is the dramatic event that happens at the end of this story? And can you predict right what's going to happen next? So again, I'm using some of the letters from Crop QV yeah, here in this passage. Okay, so think about it. Right, I cycle through one more time. Huh? Look at this. One more time, I'll just read through again. Now, second time, uh, observe the details. Observe the names. Observe the language. Observe the countries that are mentioned. Okay? Observe, if you can, any dates that appear in the story. Okay? Look out for these things. And then try to construct what you think this 
story is about, right? So I already said, right? Title, details that give you ideas about what the story is about. Uh, Solomon, what is it? Are you asking a question? Uh, yes, what is it? When can when can we see the uh, title? Oh, there's there's I'm not I didn't put the title here, but I will tell you the title at the end of the at the end of this exercise. Is that okay? Yeah, I didn't put I didn't write down the title, but I will tell you the title of this book. Okay, if you are interested to know. Uh, and I will tell you where this where is this book uh where does this book appear? Okay, it's more um it's more common than you think. Is all I can say. Right. Uh, all good, everybody. All good, Ken. Right, one last exposure for the second page. Okay, then I want to hear some responses uh, to the questions I've asked. Okay, and again, this is this is there's a reason why we are doing this. Uh, it's because we're trying to understand the text better to answer questions about it more effectively. Okay, so it's always back down to that, right? And of course, when we understand something better, uh, we are better able to reproduce it in our own writing. Lah, okay, so we become better writers when we notice uh, and are better readers. Okay, it's, it's quite natural. Okay, good. Uh, so, so, so all good, huh? All right. Uh, maybe before I do anything else, I go into the queue first, huh? What questions do y'all have about this text? And when I answer these questions, perhaps I will give you better information to do your titling and everything, okay? Anybody, what questions do y'all have about this text after reading it? I'm sure you have many questions, right? Yeah. Come. Can some of you volunteer some questions? There are no wrong questions, just as there are no wrong answers. Anyone? Come on, make your voices heard. Be interactive, be participative. Share your responses or questions. Really, uh, no questions at all. Uh. Besides Solomon's title about what the uh, question about what the title is, which I will tell you right at the end. Ah, uh, Solomon, yes. Did Lieutenant Kotler, I think. Yes, yes. you got his name perfectly right. Thank you. Yep. Did Lieutenant Kotler murder Pebble? Oh, so you're asking at the end of the story what happens next, is yeah. it? No, no, because... no. You, you cannot ask that question because my point, I want you to predict what oh, happened. Fine. So you cannot oh, ask okay. questions about that. I want you to think about what happens at the end, okay? So no, I can't answer that question. I want questions about the text. I don't want uh, predictions or anything right now, okay? Uh, Adrian? Is this in Russia? Is this in Russia? Mm, yeah. Why do you say that? Um, I'm pretty sure I know the name Pavel. And then the other one, right? Like Kotler. This one sounds like Russian. Mm, interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, is this in Russia? I'll park that question. Huh? Okay. Uh, Amelia, do you raise your hands just now to ask a question? No. Okay. Uh, Hao Tian? Yes? Go ahead, um... Hao Tian. Why, why did you, what is, why is the atmosphere like so tense? Why is the atmosphere so tense? Mm, I like the fact that you observed that this atmosphere was quite tense. Okay, yes, I agree with you. Why is the atmosphere so tense? Okay, good, that's a good question for everybody to consider. Why is it so tense? Excellent. Uh, Javen? I want to answer uh, Adrian's question. Okay. Go ahead. I think I think it's because it's in Germany because at in in front at the previous page he said that uh for leaving Germany at the moment of her greatest glory and her most vital need. Okay, thank you, Javen. Are uh, you you have drawn a connection? You made a connection there, right? So a C, yeah, uh, you've connected between leaving Germany at a moment of her greatest glory, which is obviously father's uh view of Germany, right? Father thinks Germany is glorious and great. Okay, so that's one connection, and therefore. You, uh, you say it's not Russia, right, Adrian? You get the point that uh, Javen's making. Not Russia, but Germany. But you are right, you know, J uh, Adrian. Pavel is a Russian name, or rather an Eastern European name. But Pavel obviously doesn't belong in Germany, but somehow he's there, right? Okay, so that there's a point there. Shani, go ahead. Why, uh, when, uh, on the second page, uh-huh. Yep. Go ahead. Awesome, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. This is the second page. Oh yeah. yeah this is the second page. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um when when Kotler grew angry, mm. why did no one stop him? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, very good. Why is it that Kotler is allowed to do whatever he did to Pavel, right? Whatever we don't know, right? It is not stated, huh? but apparently it's something so bad that it causes uh, Gretel and Bruno to lose their karma. Huh? Gretel grows pale and Bruno cries, right? So it's something obviously quite horrific. Uh, but why, why didn't anybody stop him from doing that to Pavel? And again, a question supplementary to that question by Shani is, so why was this thing done to Pavel even though he had spilled the bottle? I mean, spilling a bottle is obviously not something very serious, right? I mean, what's the big deal? Just pick up the bottle, you know, clean up the mess, lah, right? But apparently something else was done. So the other question would be, what did he do, right? So you all, you all have your own ideas about what that might be. Yeah? We'll, we'll answer that question later. But very good. Some very good questions. And I like the fact that uh, Javen connected one of the points uh, to Adrian's question. So that's what you all do when you make connections, right? Uh, for leaving Germany at the moment of a greatest glory was what Javen said. And let's just stay there for a while. Okay, look at that paragraph huh? in line uh, four and three. Yeah? Uh, what reason did he give for leaving Germany in a moment of a greatest glory and most vital need when it is incumbent about all of us to play our part in national revival? Was he tubercular? Tubercular means did he have tuber tuberculosis, which is a disease lah. So father is basically saying, did he leave the country because he wasn't well? But of course, I think he's being sarcastic here, right? He's not really being uh, considerate and kind. He's trying to be sarcastic. Okay, Adrian, do you raise your hand? Go ahead. Is this in World War II? Why do you say that? Um, Because it's like Germany at the greatest glory. So I think it's like when Germany is like, has invaded a lot of countries and stuff. Okay. Uh, good. But there's one more clue that confirms your hypothesis that this is Germany in World War II. I, I get what you mean. Germany in her greatest moment of glory sounds like the Third Reich. Oh you, yeah, the year, the year. Yeah. Ah, yes. Uh, let's give someone else an opportunity to answer that. Okay, Adrian? Right, don't blurt out unless I call you. Thank you. Uh, Nicholas, yes? Oh, I would like to add to Adrian's point. Yeah, go ahead. There's another clue that says it's from like a war or something. Uh -huh. is, that the, is that Kotler is a lieutenant. Okay, very good. So uh, another point is, if you knew about Germany in the Second World War, you would know that most of the Germans were conscripted into the army and all had ranks, right? They all had like uniforms and ranks. So yes, that, that strengthens the point. Uh, and if I can, uh, Javen, did you want to say something? Yeah, in 1938. Oh, very good. Okay, so if you are history buff, if you read history, uh, you will know that 1938 was right smack in the middle of the Second World War, right? You know that it started with the assassination of the Austrian Archduke in the 19, early 1930s that triggered an entire sequence of events that led to many countries in the world being pulled into a war, which was ultimately called the Second World War, right? Yeah, so yes, very good. All these clues. Can y'all notice? Can y'all see all these things? So without even knowing the title and the book, uh, I have already gathered a lot of important information about this book. When it was written, right? What it was written about, okay? Yes, Brian, go ahead. I thought, World War, I, I thought uh, that World War II was in like 1942 or something. Uh, no, that was in the middle. World War stretched over many years, huh? as you know. Huh? And different oh, countries went into the, into the war. 1942 is actually coming to the end of the war already, okay? In, in There were two theatres of world wars, huh? Two theatres, meaning two areas where the world fought its war. One was in the Pacific, which was including Japan and our country, Singapore and Malaysia. And one was in Europe, right? Where the Axis and the Allies clashed, right? Germany, Italy on one side and, you know, all these other European countries on the other, uh, including Russia, right? Yeah. So, so these things happened over many years. It didn't happen in one year. Right? You cannot say that World War was in 1942. No, it happened from the 1930s all the way to the 1940s. It took place almost over a decade of history. Yes, Solomon? Why is father called her commandant? Ah, so you notice her commandant is a rank, right? And if you read, uh, if you go and look up uh, ranks, uh, uh, lieutenant higher rank or commandant higher rank, what do you think? Uh? Anybody? Do you all think lieutenant higher or commandant higher? How many say commandant higher? Yeah. How many say lieutenant higher? Uh, uh, you can see from the way the lieutenant is behaving that obviously he is 
respecting the commandant, right? right? He's respecting father, right? So actually, father holds a higher rank, okay? Later, I explain to you what this rank actually means, huh? okay? But there's meaning to the rank. Huh? Commandant is not just a rank higher than lieutenant. It is also a position that you hold in a particular institution, which I will tell you more about later. But can you all see, just by noticing, huh, I can draw a lot of information from the text that is not in the text itself. I have brought my prior knowledge. I have made connections, right? I have brought in what I understand from history, from culture, from what I've read in other books and other places into this text so that I understand it better. Cool, everybody? All good so far? Okay, so making, you know, doing your crop QV, yeah? making connections, asking questions, right? Making observations, you know, um, and coming up with summaries, uh, uh, which leads me to this last point before I go on. What title would you give to this story, right? We've asked some questions, we've made some connections, we we brought some contextual information. What title would I give to this story? Now knowing all the things that I've just found out or I've just discussed and, you know, as a class I've brought together, right? What title? Anybody want to try? What title would I call this? Huh? Would I call this story? Yeah. Um, Amelia? Is it The Boy in Pajamas? Uh, it, it that that's the actual title of the story, but um, I don't want that title now. I want you to give a title to this particular passage from the story, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, right? Which is where this book, this passage is taken from the book, Boy in the Striped Pajamas, okay? Which I, by the way, strongly recommend that you read because it's an excellent book on Nazi-occupied Germany, and the horror and the destruction of the world war as seen through the eyes of a boy, right? Who is your age at that time. So I think it's a, it's a great book to read. It's not particularly going to be very fun. You know what I mean, right? The subject matter is quite dark, right? It's about war. It's about death. It's about inequality. It's about racism to a certain extent. Uh, but, but it's very insightful, okay? Uh, and, uh, but that aside, what title would you give to this passage? I don't want boy in the striped pajamas. Okay, but thank you for bringing that up, Amelia. Anyone? Uh, Solomon? The War for Germany. Do you think that's a, too big already? The title is a bit too big, right? We are talking about a disagreement in a family here, right? Hao Tian earlier mentioned how the tense atmosphere in the family is affecting this dinner that they're having. I think talking about Germany may be a little bit too high level, right? Can can I have a, a slightly more relevant uh, title to this story? Anyone? It's okay. Don't worry about it. Right? The worst comes is I disagree with it. That's all. Okay, anybody? But thank you. Huh? Your discussions are all very good and very insightful. I want to encourage you to continue to make these observations and attempts. Ariel? Disagreements. Uh, disagreements. A family disagreement. Right? A, a disagreement. Yes. Okay, good. Um, I, I think that's a good start. Uh, yes, Brian? A uh, family fight. A family fight? Why do you say fight? Uh, because they're like um, arguing. They're arguing. Okay, mm, thank you. Yes, anybody else? Anybody else wants to give an alternative? Dia? Argument at the table. An argument at the table. What table would this be? Dining table dining table, they're probably having a meal, a dinner of some sort, right? Okay. Uh, do you think they're all members of the same family? Do you think Lieutenant Kotler is a part of the family? It would be a bit weird to call your brother Lieutenant Kotler, right? You know what I mean? If you're sitting at the table with your brother, you wouldn't call your brother Lieutenant Kotler, right? So it looks to me like maybe Lieutenant Kotler is not part of the, of the family, right? Who else is, do you think is not part of the family? Ah? Who do you think is part of the family? Who do you think is not part of the family? Anybody? Guess. Ah. Very easy question. Quick. Raise your hands. Yes. Brian? Um, uh, the father. Father, uh, obviously. Yeah. Let's see. Uh... Okay, you want me to go to the second page? Yeah. 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 I, I, I forgot what's the, the, the son's name. Wait, it's Greta and Bruno. Ah, Bre Gretel and Bruno, right? Probably uh, Gretel sounds like a girl's name, right? Yeah. Like Hansel and Gretel, right? Yeah. And then Bruno and is mother. a boy's name, right? Yeah. So probably brother and sister, right? Then mother, right? Ah. Yeah, so mother. these are the family. Father, mother, Bruno, Gretel, right? Then probably who do you think is Le Lieutenant Kotler? 
who do you think is Lieutenant Kotler? Yeah, Dia? Um, I'm not sure who is Lieutenant Kotler, but Paris mm. is not in the family. Yeah, I agree with you. The name doesn't sound German, right? Like we heard Adrian say, it sounds Russian, right? So Pavel doesn't, obviously doesn't belong there. And do you think Pavel is the same level as the family and Kotler? Or do you think he's a bit lower level? What do you think? Are they on the same level? Are they all on the same level? Huh, no. Solomon? I think Pavel might be their butler. Butler, servant, right? Man, servant, maybe somebody who serves the family, serves the, the wine, right? Okay. And finally, uh, this is the, the slightly controversial part. Huh? It's slightly, you know, might be a little bit not so pleasant to talk about. Huh? What do you think happens to... Um, uh, yeah, don't worry about it, Ariel. Um, it, you, can, you can just leave whenever it's convenient, okay? Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll record this session. Uh, what do you think happened to Pavel huh, at the end of the story? Something so bad that Bruno cried and Gretel grew pale, but nobody stepped in or intervened to stop. What do you think happened to Pavel after he spilled the wine? Eh? Yes, Dia. Lieutenant Kotler, like maybe cut something. Hmm? Cut, cut what thing? Cut his head or something. Cut, why, why do you say cut? Eh? Why, why, why do you use the word cut? Uh, I don't know. Because Lieutenant Kotler grew very angry and then no one stopped him because I think they were afraid. Okay, so so you're, you're saying that he, he somehow hurt um, Pavel, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, right? Uh, uh, yeah, Solomon? Uh, yeah? I think he might have fired him. Fired meaning what? That means he's uh like like fired him. Because like fired him so he cannot work anymore. Would firing a person cause Bruno to cry and Gretel to grow pale? Hmm. I let's think about that. Nicholas, what do you think? Uh Lieutenant uh the lieutenant pointed a gun. Oh, pointed a gun. Okay. He's in the military. Maybe he has uh, some kind of a gun. Uh, threaten uh, Pavel with it. Okay. Uh, possible, possible. Yeah. Um, okay. Angel? I think um, he injured him or something like that. Injured him, right? Beat him up, right? Uh, similar to what Dia said, maybe cut him with a knife, injured him, threatened him with a gun, Nicholas said, right? Um, and Solomon said fired him. But I don't think Kotler has the right to fire Pavel because it looks like Kotler doesn't belong in the same house. Right? So maybe Kotler doesn't have the authority to fire Pavel. Okay, thank you. Um, Hao Tian? Uh, he picked up the bottle, Pavel dropped and hit, and hit and hit it in Pavel's face. Okay, so maybe he hit Pavel with the bottle. So something uh, uh, something violent, lah, right? Okay, threaten him with a gun, uh, you know, uh, cut him with a knife, uh, hit him with a bottle. Right? All these are violent acts, right? Which will cause the children to be very fearful, correct? That would explain why the children react the way that they did. Okay, good. Yes, uh, Dia? Since Lieutenant Cottle is working uh, in the military, he might maybe like shout very much. Yeah, so yes. Okay, so yeah, shouted at him, hit him, you know. Yeah, so uh, all of this would fit with the reaction of Bruno and Gretel, right? When you are in a room, especially if you are a small child, and somebody suddenly gets very violent or very loud or very threatening, right? You will cause the children to cry. Do you all agree with me? That's what happens, right? When suddenly if something really loud or, you know, if, if something really violent happens, uh, it can trigger uh, the reaction in the children. Okay, so good. Very good. Thank you all. Very astute. Um, very, very good um, observations, uh, which I'm... Um, which I'm very, very thankful for. So I can see that you're all making good observations and you're all following along with me as you read this text. As I'm sure you can see, most texts allow you to do this, okay? So I want you all to be very vigilant and very diligent in doing this, okay? Uh, cognizant of the time, huh? I don't want to drag this on a little bit too far. Let me just get into the activity, okay? Now, I'm not going to do this, okay? Uh, because we don't have time, right? 
um, we've already done most of it anyway. We've already annotated, connected, and responded. So that's okay, right? So I just want to uh, end this part of the presentation by talking about how, right? When we finish our first reading, we must always do our close reading. Close reading is what we just did, right? Where we go into the details. We look at what are the contextual clues that tell us where, when, who, why this particular passage is happening. We title it. We give it some you know, idea. Uh, Amelia actually told us the title of the book already. And again, I strongly recommend that you read it. It's age appropriate, right? Um, there are two very big children's books that were written during the Second World War. One of them was this book. And this book is called The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. It's about a boy who was born as the son of one of the um, like high-ranking commanders who like basically ran a camp where all the prisoners were gathered together during the German war, okay? Uh, if you know that in during the German war, there was a genocide on like this race of people called the Jews, right? And this genocidal act uh, was done in Germany amongst other places, right? In, in many other places in Europe, it was carried out. Uh. So you can read about this very dark page in human history uh, in the book, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. So this is one of the two big books that was written to cast light on this very bad thing that happened in our history just about 60 years ago, right? In the 1940s. So that's The Boy in Stri Striped Pajamas. You can go read it. You can go buy it. It's available and popular, actually. The second book I'm sure you all have heard of is The Diary of Anne Frank. How many have heard of The Diary of Anne Frank? Yeah. So these two books were written about the same time in history. Coincidentally, one of them written from the perspective of a boy, right? In this case, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas and one written from the perspective of a girl, in this case, Anne Frank, right? Who was a girl who lived during these times and was a victim of this particular system, right? She was one of the prisoners, okay? In one of these camps, and then she ultimately lost her life. So if you want to read more about the Second World War, about, you know, all the things that happened then, these two books are really good books. I recommend them to you, okay? So Diary of Anne Frank, right? One of them, if you want to read it from the perspective of a girl, especially writing a diary, and The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, right? Which is a story, it's a made-up story, but it's based on real events that happened, right? During the Second World War, from the perspective of a boy growing up in a German household, right? So the first one, the girl is the victim. The second one, the boy is also a victim, but he is brought up as one of uh, the, the children of one of the high-ranking German officials, okay? So go and read these two books if you want to. I'll send a link to your parents. Uh, you all can read it. Okay, now, so just remember all these things, right? I'm not going to ask you to do this uh, because we are out of time, but I will set the blue exercise for you all as a homework. Is that okay, everybody? Right? Then you all can attempt it uh, as and when it's convenient. I won't hold you back, okay? So give me a minute now. Let me share the link and the code with you. Please write it down or like enter into it so that you won't forget it. Then after that, I'm going to end the session so that I won't hold you all back for too long, okay? Right, so give me one minute. Huh? Let me just stop the sharing session and let me start the sharing session for the blue card link. Okay, let me do this. Sorry, one minute. Um, is it okay if I choose a different game mode for your for your blue card today? I, I'm a bit bored with the monster brawl, huh? Uh, yeah, choose um, choose um, the the fish or the, the hack. coding one. The choose the crypto one. Crypto hack. Crypto, crypto hack. hack. Crypto hack. Crypto hack. Crypto hack. No, there's no there's no crypto hack for this activity. Uh, no. I, I I give you all a choice, okay? Uh, either you want tower defense, cafe, on. doom, crazy kingdom, or factory. Cafe, factory, factory, factory. factory. Okay, I, I hear factory a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna do factory. Our defense. Factory. Factory. Okay, wait. Uh. Assign mode. Okay, let me just share this with you. Uh. Days, how many days? I'm going to give you... Is one week enough for you to finish this? Okay, you can do it any time. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, okay, Sean. But those who want Same. to, I'll give you seven days. I will give you an hour to... Uh, no, I'll give you... No, less than that. I'll give you 15 minutes to finish it. Like the last time we had... 15 minutes last time, right? Or oh, 15 minutes, right? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to give you comprehension. This is, will be a comprehension test. 
Okay, this homework. Uh, okay. Uh, game finishes after fifteen minutes. Okay, right. Allow students to come. Okay, uh, assign now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste the link. Uh, uh into the chat group. Okay for everyone in the meeting. So look in the chat under your uh, Zoom account uh, for the link, okay? Can you all see the link? Okay? Can we end the recording now? Yes, I will end the recording right now. Thanks for reminding me. Okay.